All right, guys, welcome back. It's been a while since we've done a story time episode. This isn't quite a story time episode, um, more an explanation, hopefully a learning video for you guys. The topic today is ejecting in the barrel or how to fall in the barrel or you pull into a closeout, how do you jump, which way do you jump, um, if you have time, obviously. The timing of these things, uh, the different moves you would want to go for, whether you're over sand or you're over reef or you're riding into a closeout or you're already in the barrel and there's no time. Um, there's certain different scenarios that you want to do different things. Uh, some of you have asked about this, not too many, but I thought it would be a cool topic uh, to learn a little bit about and then go and test at your local beach break or wave or whatever. Hopefully, um, like anything, if you learn something here, it saves you from getting more pounded or hitting the bottom or anything like that. This is just my opinions and what I've learned over the years helps. Um, some things I learned instinctually, some things I tried and worked. Um, and of course, sometimes the ocean is this chaotic place, so it's not always gonna work. Even if you do everything right, uh, you're gonna get work still. So there's always that possibility. But that being said, um, hopefully you take a couple of these little hints like you did from the duck dive video and they work um, in your sessions. So how to fall or eject in the barrel in a closeout in a wave you know you're not going to make. And then I'll go over a little bit, um, kind of different ways to exit a barrel uh, in different scenarios. So first things first, we would like to say um, rest in peace and give our regards to the Ho family. Um, Derek Ho passed away yesterday and we lost the legend out at Pipe. Pipe will never be the same without him. Um, no one out there could part a crowd like Derek could. He owned the lineup, he'd put in the most time. He's 55 years old and surfing pipe as good as any of the top guys out there. Jamie O'Brien, guys like these, they're pulling back if Derek even looks at a wave. So that just gives you, he was at the top of the hierarchy and paved the way for surfers out of Hawaii, our first world champion, things of that nature, and probably um, one of the most legendary pipe surfers of all time and uh, surfers out of Hawaii of all time. And we send our regards and support and love to the entire Ho family, Mason and his pops and Coco and, and Makoa, his son, of course, and Kiana, his daughter. Um, it's a devastating loss to the whole surf community. So rest in peace, uh, send your love and support to the Ho family. That being said, let's get the video started. Um, we're gonna start with reef, ejecting in a barrel of a reef. And I'm gonna go down into a couple different scenarios here. So first one, um, you take off, you're pumping down the line, you're at a barreling wave, you see, okay, I'm pumping into a closeout. What do I want to do? I can't jump out the back, um, I don't have time, but I do have time to decide how I wanna jump. And that's usually the case of you do one pump and you're not in the barrel yet, but you're almost in the closeout right is coming at you. Best thing to do when you have the time available is you want to um, try and choose the way you want, you're going to land. So if you're not having to jump into any kind of turbulence or anything, you have a smooth face and you have the flat bottom of the wave in front of you, you want to try and jump feet first and get that penetration. Um, as soon as you land feet first and you get your arms under at all, you wanna do this movement, doing that movement, like you're, say you were floating in the water with your head above and you wanted to go down and you cranked your arms up and you shot down. That's exactly the movement you wanna do if you jump feet first. Jump feet first, land underwater, whoosh yourself and aim out the back of the wave. So you're here riding, um, the right's coming at you. You jump feet first, pencil dive, you whoosh your arms so your body shoots down and hopefully out the back this way and that's going to cause the wave to go over you now key here is you really really want to try and jump into the flat part of that wave um, the more on the face you try and jump the more risk you land on that tension of the water as the waves barreling and your feet slide and you end up doing a backslide into the lip i've done it we've probably all done it at some point and it is devastating because you don't have any penetration in the wave and you're kind of floating along the surface until the lip drives you under. Um, so that's kind of worst case scenario in there. Remember, you're dropping in, you're gonna try and pull in, uh, you're too deep, you have a moment to decide what to do. You cannot straighten out, you cannot jump out the back. 
Uh, you're gonna wanna jump feet first into the flats, penetrate, shoot your arms up uh, as far as swimming and get out the back and kind of squiggle out the back as much as you can. Board, the wave's gonna take your board, it's gonna pull on you, but you're gonna avoid uh, most of the violence of the wave. And that is a big key in any time you are falling. You're looking to avoid the most violent part of the wave. And even if you do end up getting work, if you can just get yourself out of the way of that first violent impact, then uh, most of the time you're not gonna get as worked. And it's usually that first uh, violent impact that can drive you into the reef or the sand or uh, move you in a way that you don't have control over and that's when you get hurt. Okay, so uh, next one. You drop in, it's a steep drop, boom, you're in the barrel now. You are in a closeout, you're too deep, you don't have the time of riding into the barrel, you don't have the time to make uh, the decision. You, the barrel's over you, so you can't necessarily jump feet first, and, but you do have a moment um, to jump, and you don't have to jump in that impact, if I hope that makes sense. So you're in the barrel, you're traveling, you know you're too deep, you can't jump up head first because your head might get clipped by the lip. Um, so you're gonna wanna jump almost as if you were to jumping to body surf and it's not necessarily head first you don't really ever want to jump head first but you're going to use your arm as a kind of surface tension and break and it's the same thing you want to jump lower in the wave, but you don't want to jump right where the lips hitting the water because that is the most devastating area of all to jump that's going to send you straight to the bottom because that lip is landing breaking open the water and clearing a path to the bottom and uh, this is over reef so that's the last place we want to go uh, so you're gonna wanna jump lower in the face, not up here, because again, most likely, you may get your head in the water, your feet are gonna whip around, and you're not gonna have penetration, and you're gonna go over the falls. So lower in the face, but not where the lip is landing. So there's kind of that money zone, here's the barrel, lip's landing here, there's a little bit of a flat area here, there's a wall here, you don't wanna jump here, you don't wanna jump there, you wanna land here, and you want it to be cutting as far as you're going head first, but this arm is gonna, if your backside or this arm, uh, if your front side, is gonna break the surface of the water for you. And as soon as your head gets underwater, depending if you're going left or right, um, you are gonna jerk your head and body in the direction of out the back of the wave. And so if you've ever do, seen a seal uh, do a turn, say swimming at the camera, it's on all the nature footage, so you're at the camera, if you see a seal the way he moves his body to turn direction, he goes with his head and he flips his body and turns it into a U. With his momentum, you turn your U body into a U in the water and you naturally do a turn. Now you have the momentum of being on a surfboard and you're riding forward, you dive, as soon as you hit the water, you U out the back. Most of the time, um, this is what I'll do at a big, in a big pipe barrel or or a big backdoor barrel, anything like that, and most of the time it works. You can kind of you your body and you will shoot you out the back. You'll miss the main explosion. You may slow, do that slow suck over, get pulled into the turbulence, uh, but that's a lot better, like I said, than missing that main violence. So uh, going over that more, a little more quickly, you're pulling in, um, it's too late to jump off your board. You don't have the time, you don't have the option you have to jump um, and you're gonna jump onto your side, aiming, the goal always is penetration into the water, otherwise you're gonna slide and get really worked. Penetration in the water, as soon as you penetrate, you're gonna jerk your body out the back, um, in the direction of out the back. If you just jump and land and think you're gonna be fine, it, the, way, the, way, the momentum of the wave is just gonna pull you over. You have to break yourself away from the momentum of the wave. Um, and hopefully you guys are seeing clips of this. Luckily I have some fun GoPro clips that you guys will see uh, where these, this kind of stuff has worked. Um, okay, third scenario. It's a late drop, super late. You into the barrel and there's fucking nowhere to go. Um, you're just looking at, and this is all happening in microseconds of course, but you're looking at a whitewater turbulence in front of you. The lip has already landed. Um, and a lot of times this is where you get the most pounded because you have the least control over your fall. There's the, the least amount of time. What you can do is you don't want to leap. Um, if you're gonna leap into where the lip is landing, where it's carved open that thing, you're gonna wanna try and go feet and hands first because a lot of times that's gonna send you to the bottom. Every now and then it doesn't and it 
blast you out the back super quickly and that's just pure luck. It's like you don't have control over that. You're gonna go one way or the other. But jumping head first, you might go straight to the bottom head first. You could get pushed out the back, but that's, you don't wanna risk that. So you kinda wanna just jump and really be prepared to land on something hard. So if you jump, you're not necessarily gonna go totally feet first, but jump hands and feet forward. And if you land and you don't get shot straight to the bottom, then fine, you're gonna take the beating um, and just be stoked that you didn't hit the bottom. But if you do, you're gonna get sent to the bottom and so that's jumping right here. You have no time, it's all turbulence in here in the barrel. It's all splashing up at you. That water is extremely stretched and, and full of tension. And honestly, I've hit water in big barrels right there where it feels like I landed on cement. So you definitely don't wanna be landing head first or in an awkward body position. I've injured my shoulders landing on that type of water and I believe, and it's just a theory, that the lip lands with such violence that it stretches the water um, and the water is trying to ferociously come back up and it's just, the water tension is stretched really tight. It sounds weird, but I swear, and you hit that water and it feels like you hit rock. And I've jumped wrong in a two foot barrel at back door and I hit my face on that and uh, was almost knocked out just by water. Um, and so that it's a dangerous time, it's a dangerous spot in the barrel and you wanna keep your face away from it. You wanna jump ideally hands and feet first. You're gonna take that hit, uh, hopefully not be sent straight to the bottom, hopefully just penetrate into the turbulence and then either get sucked over or, and when, like I said always, if you're, gunning, if you're getting sucked over, try and get yourself out of that power loop of the barrel. So you're getting sucked over here uh, you don't want to come with the lip where it's going, which is straight down. You want to try and the way is breaking, break yourself out of that and get into where that white water is going to continue momentum and push you in. So you can flop your body however you want to do it. It's not always going to work, but uh, it can help. Um, hopefully if it helps 1% of the time, then that's 1% less pounded you just got. Um, so yeah. Jumping into the turbulence, feet and hands first, be prepared for an impact on the reef. Um, ideally, if you land, do land on the reef and you're on your hands and knees or whatever, you might scrape your knees a little bit, you're on the bottom. You're as low as you can go and you have the opportunity to now kick off the bottom, jump up to the surface and uh, you just have a little more control. So it is a bad thing if you absolutely smack the reef and you do it uh, when you're not ready for it or uncontrollably, but if you do get to the bottom and you're on your hands and knees, you have the advantage of being able to shoot up. Um, so it's not a place to panic. Uh, you know you're at the bottom already, it's time to get to the surface, and that's that. So we've gone over uh, when you have time, and these are, and when you don't have time, and these are gonna vary a little bit between front side and back side. I feel like, um, Backside, you are a little at a disadvantage. Your body's not aiming forward completely, so it's gonna be a little harder. And I see a ton of guys do this. They are grabbing their rail and they're going down there and they just literally jump like this and land on their back and they slide down the face of the wave into the lip. You wanna look where you're jumping always. And obviously you don't want to <laughs> jump face first in water into your eyes and do that whole thing, but you want to jump forward with momentum and kind of know where you're going. If you just jump like that, which I see a ton of people do, and I don't know why you would jump head first and not even looking where you're going, like back turn, don't do that. Don't just give up and be like, ah, oh, like jump with purpose and jump trying to know where you're going. Uh, you want to have as much, the ocean's unpredictable. Like I always say, you want to have as much control as possible in your falls as well as anything in your surfing. Um, so if you can gain a little bit of upper hand on those falls, then you're gonna get less worked. So no jumping and not looking where you're going. Even if you don't have control, just eye out, you might be able to rack, get your hand up, something like that. Um, like I said, no head first jumping, um, unless you absolutely, absolutely have to, and if you do, if there's no way around it, you couldn't get your hands up in time, you're jumping head first, you need to utilize that little seal turn because 
say the bottom's right there and you seal turn, then you just narrowly, narrowly avoided it. Um, you never want to go with a stiff body head first because you're just going to drive like a spear wherever, that's, wherever the wave wants to take you. So if you do have to jump head first, um, because there's no other option, you can't get your hands up, then you wanna twist your body. And you may have a sore neck. I have a sore neck all the time from surfing pipe. These two bars of like right here are sore almost every time from a lot of those exits where I had to jump, it's too late and my head hits first, but I've yanked out the back and I've cleared myself of the turbulence. Snook, Snook, I'm recording something. Come here. Sorry guys, Snook is attempting to get outside she doesn't like barrel talk. She'd rather talk about lizards and catching birds and things of that nature. Snook, <laughs> look at this. Uh, you don't care, huh? You wanna talk about, you wanna talk about barrels? You don't like the ocean. Snook doesn't like the ocean. Okay, back on topic. Um, let's go into jumping over sand. And this is a different scenario. Now, you're not as afraid of the bottom or getting to the bottom. Um, and I mean, pretty much everything stays the same, except you can be a little looser with your jumping. You don't want to have anything. It's, it's basically saying you don't want to have anything with your arms stuck out at a weird angle. You don't want to break arm. You don't want to break a collarbone, do any of that. You don't want to land head first pile driving into the sand, but, um, just kind of a more casual jump into that turbulent white water is totally fine. Um, if you have the time, like I said, utilize those other movements, jump feet first if you have tons of time, um, head and side first to get out the back if you have a little more time, and if you don't have any time at all, you're gonna wanna jump hands and feet first preparing to land on that sand. Um, like I said, sand is a little less dangerous than the reef, so, um, you don't want to be more relaxed, but it's just not as consequential. I mean, that being said, people do break their backs, people do break their knees, their legs, uh, their necks on sand often. I see it at Sandy Beach all the time. That being said, a little tip, um, you guys want to get better at barrel riding, then you need to go to your beach break and you need to practice pulling into barrels all day. And this is going to help you practice the drop, getting into the barrel, riding the barrel, even if it's a fast closeout, and ejecting in the barrel. And you're gonna have something that you can do repetition over and over and over and over again. Um, and that's gonna help you get good. And when you're over reef, you're gonna be very good at falling. You're gonna be very good at traveling the barrel, getting into the barrel, avoiding the lip and the common mistakes. This is what me and guys like Co Rothman and Yael Olsen, when we were growing up, we surf the sandbars as much as we can. The more doubled up it was, the more closing out it was, the more better we thought it was because we could practice steeper drops, harder drops, more difficulty getting under the lip fast enough. Uh, we practiced our te technique for years and years and I'll admit a little unknowingly, we just loved going out and getting work. But what happened is it taught us um, instincts underwater. It taught us that getting to the bottom and kicking off is an advantage. Um, it taught us all these natural abilities of falling the right way and the wrong way and how to get basically less work so we could continue surfing the sandbars longer during that day. No, no, stop. Hey. Snoop. A couple other things to go over. This is a fun one, and one that can go devastatingly wrong. You come out of a barrel, it's closing out, and you're looking up, and you're like, I can get out the back. And the wave is just close, starting to break. It's a no-go. You do not want to attempt this. I've attempted it. Stop it. God damn. No, no. I've attempted it at big chopes and I've had it go horribly wrong. Going right, going left, it's not gonna go well. You're gonna aim for jumping out the back and 
uh, you're gonna get clipped in your chest and sucked over the falls with zero control. Literally your body like this going over. The uh, monster arcing jump out the back of a closeout almost always ends in disaster. I would say 90% of the time it ends in disaster. When it does go well, uh, you're stoked, but you're more left with a fear of that was really sketchy. I almost got sucked over. And honestly, whether it clips your head, your chest, or your feet, it's gonna flip you back into the power source of that uh, barrel. So the, the attempt to jump out of the closeout uh, almost never ends well. Um, you're better off jumping in that flat bottom and letting the wave go over you. You're wishing out the back and uh, keeping it safe. So let's go over exiting the barrel. A couple different theories here. This isn't about falling, but um, it hopefully can help you for a couple certain things. There's obviously the most, uh, the easiest, the barrel's open, you come out of it, that's that. Let's talk about when the barrel, you're in it, you're traveling, you have speed, momentum on your side, you're not stuck on a foam ball, and you see ahead of you, the barrel's like this, a clamp coming down like that. And it's a vertical, uh, the lip of the wave is vertical, so. No. This cat. It just wants to get outside and catch lizards. Anyway, the the way the lip is coming down vertical and you're going at it with a lot of speed. Now, there's a couple things to do here. It's not always a straight line, it's kind of tilted like this. And if you run into it at that tilt, most of the time it takes the nose of your board, shoots it down, that barrel turns into a white water, you get sucked over and extremely pounded. The key here is you want to tilt the nose of your board so that it penetrates that falling curtain the exact angle. Um, so say it's falling like this, you want to hit it turn down out of the barrel, so hitting it head on like that. If you hit it at an angle, you're going to go like that and you're going to eat shit. If you hit it, if it's like this, then most of the time you can break out, but you want to realize that it's all moving this way. So a turn out of the barrel is a key here. Oftentimes you'll feel a wave turning out to sea on you and you'll realize, oh shoot, like I can only turn up into the barrel so much. So you're gonna wanna go the opposite direction of that clamp. And unless you have an exit way out the top and you're gonna, and you can get up there and get out. But if it's completely clamping, you wanna turn against the clamp. And oftentimes you turn against it and it just brushes you and pushes you out of the barrel. And you may fall, but you come out and then fall. Um, and that's the best case scenario, because if you fall in that clamp most of the time, that's when you get the most work stuck in the white water, tumbling and tumbling and tumbling and tumbling. And it's a long hold down and you're getting really worked and oftentimes you swallow water because you're in the surface and then you're back down and you're getting worked um, along in the power source of the wave. So I hope that covers um, most of it. Uh, if there's any, hopefully there's some little tips and tricks in there that you guys can gain um, some understanding. Again, going out into your local beach break and pulling into closeouts is the best uh, call. Just be careful, the biggest danger there is your board hitting you. And that being said, with the feet first jump, things like the feet first jump, you are risking your board hitting you. You have a short leash, you're jumping ahead of your board, which is gonna pull your board uh, nose first behind you. and the fact is your head is entering the water last if you're doing that foot first jump. So there is a sketchiness involved. Your board could fly and hit you. Um, most of the time it doesn't, but it's definitely a risk you should be aware of. And so just know that you don't have all the time to stay extended uh, when you're jumping feet first. You wanna get under as quick as possible because not only is that wave trying to grab your upper body and pull you over, but your board is head hunting you. Oh. Missed a big one. Okay, we're gonna go over when you are front side or back side and you have the confidence, the speed, and the maneuverability of a shorter board to simply pull out the back. This is um, a tricky one because in the scenario of pulling back out the back of a barrel, you're on your board and you pull out the back and you get out the back with your board, yourself, everything, 
the key here is you cannot be traveling down the barrel and simply just lean in and you're going to go out the back. Like I said, it's going to catch your head, it's going to whip your body around, you're going to get sucked over. The key here is if you're in a really wide barrel, you bottom turn down slightly towards the lip and then crank U-turn out and dig your nose in and body. And oftentimes best is to leave your board behind and dive through, but if it's a smaller wave, you can get your board with you, you don't risk your board breaking, you don't risk you breaking, you can get out the back. So the key with that is you're in the barrel, uh, you're, you have the time, it's gonna close out and the barrel's wide enough, you wanna turn down a little bit and then turn up and get as vertical into the wave as you can. The less vertical you hit it, the more side entry you get into the wall of the wave, uh, the less chance you have of penetrating and going out the back. So it takes a little bottom turn front side, it's way easier than back side. Front side, it can be pulled on pretty big waves and um, you don't wanna be going super fast for it and that's why taking a little speed off on that little bottom turn if the barrel's wide enough or you're kind of coming out and going into the closeout helps a lot. Penetration is straight on into the face of the wave as you can and then diving out the back. Um, I think that little trick of that little wait, wait a second down then is gonna help a lot of guys. I see a lot of guys thinking they're gonna do it by just leaning into the wave um, and they almost always get their head clip. Their momentum carries the rest of their body this way and they do a flip and slide down the wave. Um, backside is a lot harder to do this, though totally possible. Guys like John and Jamie are very good at it and it's not gonna happen on a big wave. Um, that's for sure it's gonna happen on a small, lighter, uh, less consequential wave and it's the same thing you want to bottom turn a little bit and then arc up and use all your momentum to carve up and hit the wall of the wave head on and use your board to spear through it along with your body most times you can abandon your board um, some people are better at it than others but here and there you can keep your board under your feet the wave goes over you you're out the back and you're paddling again which is the ideal scenario uh, I can't believe I almost forgot that. But, so, highlights on that. Use a little bottom turn to get down and then shove through. You wanna hit the wave as head on as possible. The more uh, side angle you get, the more your momentum will be used against you, right? You want your momentum to be hitting it like this as it barreling, so bottom turn, then hit it, versus just trying to turn into it, which is gonna cause you to probably get sucked over. I think I've covered all the points of ejecting or falling or getting out of a barrel when it's closing out on you. Um, hopefully that little clamp tip going against the, whatever, however I said it, going against the, uh, the curtain rather than kind of trying to just force your way through it at a weird angle. You want to go straight on through it, same as the kick out off the back. Um, helps you guys at some point or another. Um, if you want to get better at barrel riding, you want to get better knowledge or instincts, Go to your beach break and practice. I can't say it enough. Um, it's going to help you in the long run. That's it. Hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe, like. I know these story times are a little scattered. I kind of just roll with the flow and, and go with what comes to mind. But I find that's best and, and most natural. Um, and obviously a lot of things come into play such as your board size. And on a really big board you have less maneuverability. So take that all into account. You guys already know that stuff. Checking out. Have a good day. Go pull into some closeouts.